module 10d we're going to start looking at resonance structures and really examining like how do i determine a resonance structure and what are valid resonance structures how do i figure out if one resonance structure is better than another so another slide bunch of rules how do we go about doing resonance structures first resonance is used when one lewis structure does not adequately describe the molecule what do i mean by that i mean that i'm going to have some kind of multiple bond somewhere whether it be a double bond, triple bond, etc., that the electrons can move. I'm not really sure, per se, where to put those electrons right away. It might be more than one structure that describes it correctly. Or maybe I haven't minimized formal charge, and I could minimize formal charge by producing a series of resonant structures instead. To indicate resonance, you must use this arrow. These arrows, what I call your double-headed arrow, are known as your resonance arrows. This is not the same as drawing two separate arrows like this. It is not the same as this. This is just, this is like um, a rate thing for like going forward and backwards in a reaction. We learn about rates in chapter 15, um, Chem 2 Kinetics. This is what we call your equilibrium arrows. That is coming in, I don't remember what chapter, 16 maybe, but it's Chem 2. We want resonance arrows. So make sure you're using the proper arrows. Resonance is not referring to vibration or oscillation. What I mean by that is molecules are always moving, right? And so they can vibrate, they can oscillate, they can move around and turn. Resonance is not that. It's not just the bond itself or the, the atoms themselves moving around a bond. It's not free rotation around a bond. It's the electron density itself shifting or being moved to between two different atoms. Resonance does mean that the true molecule is a hybrid of the resonance structures. The hybrid is the true molecule. The resonance structures are what we draw to try to describe the hybrid. You do need to be able to distinguish between these terms, resonance structure and resonance hybrid. And as we're drawing these out, I'll try to be more specific on the way these actually look. A resonance structure itself is a valid Lewis structure. Just because it's a valid Lewis structure does not mean it's the best structure. It just means it follows the rules of Lewis. One thing that students get really bogged down about when they do Lewis structures and all of that is like, well, that's the way the molecule looks, right? Not always. What I need you to remember is that Lewis is just a model. We are trying to model the way these atoms are connected in a 2D, um, two-dimensional space, and these are 3D things. Even when we get into chapter, um, the next chapter, looking at Vesper, which is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, valence bond theory, and molecular orbital theory, those are still theories, and every theory has its limitations. Resonance structures are a valid Lewis structure, such as O3. O3 has two different resonance structures. If I look at O3, O3 has 18 valence electrons, three oxygens, 18 valence electrons. I've got an oxygen, bonded to an oxygen, so first thing you do is you connect your atoms. The next thing you do is you give your outer atoms their octet. You then see how many electrons you've used up, and we see we've used up 16 so far. You add any extra electrons to your central atom. You then check, and this is the step that I always forget to specify. Check to make sure your central atom has a, an octet. If your central atom does not yet have its octet, you are going to use one of the pairs of lone pair electrons to form a double bond or triple bond, whichever, to that central atom. So in this case, I'm going to use this oxygen to donate its electrons to form a double bond. But why did I use that oxygen? What would be the difference if I did it from the other side? There's no difference. One oxygen donates. Now, if I do formal charge on these, if I look at the formal charge, oxygen, remember, with two bonds and two lone pairs, has zero formal charge. Two bonds, two lone pairs, zero formal charge. This oxygen in the center, remember, oxygen has six valence electrons. That central oxygen has two lone pair electrons, two electrons, one lone pair, and three bonds to it. So it has a plus one charge. In the oxygen on the end, six valence electrons, 
six lone pair electrons and a single bond minus one charge. Overall, the formal charge is still zero. The overall formal charge of the molecule is still zero, which means it is a correct Lewis structure. But these are also known as resonant structures. These two structures both contribute to the true hybrid of the molecule. What I mean by hybrid is the way this molecule really looks. What's really happening is that the oxygen is bonded to itself. This oxygen center does have a double bond, or um, a lone pair on it. These oxygens both have two lone pairs of electrons. But then this double bond here, or here, whichever way you want to look at it, is spaced out across both of these. So it's partial double bond character in each spot. We say it has partial double bond character. And now this is just not a great drawing, but this is the best we can draw of the hybrid. What we say is that electron density from that double bond is delocalized. Delocalized meaning it's a spread across multiple atoms. The electron density, electron density is what's the attractive forces that's what's holding your bonds together, has been spread across multiple atoms. The resonance hybrid is a mathematical mixing of all of your resonance structures. So the hybrid is the true molecule. The structures are not. The structures contribute to the resonance hybrid. Resonance structures are not necessarily equivalent. We will do an example where we see that they're not all equivalent. And so you have to be able to determine which one is most contributing, which one is least contributing. To evaluate the resonance structures, I need you to consider formal charge. We want to minimize the formal charge. So these three points are really important to think about. The less formal charge, the better. How can I minimize my formal charge? If I can't, sometimes I can't. Sometimes there's just formal charge. Like here, I've got plus one, minus one, minus one, plus one. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't minimize that further. But if I had like a negative two and a positive two, could I minimize that by forming a double bond? That doesn't mean that the negative two, positive two wouldn't be a valid structure. It means that minimizing the formal charge is a better structure and contributes to the true molecule more. It's usually better to have the negative formal charge on the more electronegative elements. Avoid like charges on adjacent atoms. So generally speaking, the more resonant structures that can be formed, the more stable the molecule. This is due to that charge delocalization, the spread of that charge across the molecules. When drawing resonance structures, move only electrons. Never, ever, ever move your atoms. The atoms do not move. So let's look at a couple examples. First, let's look at N2O. If I look at N2O, that's two nitrogens, so two times five valence electrons, one oxygen, so one times six valence electrons, overall 16 valence electrons. It does tell me here that nitrogen is a central atom, which is nice to know. That way I don't have to think about it. We'll put nitrogen in the center, and it's going to connect to another nitrogen and an oxygen. I'm then going to give my outer atoms their octet. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 14 and 16, I have used up all of my resonance, or all of my electrons. Next thing I have to do is step number four from our slide about learning how to do Lewis structures make sure my central atom has its octet. If it does not, I'm going to use double bonds to form that octet. So my central atom does not have an octet and it does want one. So I'm going to donate some electrons. Now, I could pick them from here. I could pick them from here. I kind of do what I want here. So let's do one where each one donates. Let's say the nitrogen donates and the oxygen each donate. That's going to form this structure. One nitrogen donated its, a pair of electrons to form a double bonded nitrogen. The oxygen also donated a pair of electrons to form a double bonded nitrogen. This is a resonance structure though. Why did they each have to donate? Why couldn't I have said, oops, instead of each donating, Why didn't I instead say nitrogen's going to donate two pairs and form two um, a triple bond here? Totally possible. It's 
not breaking any rules. That's completely possible. I still have used up 18 electrons and my nitrogen still has um, my, nit my terminal nitrogen, meaning the outside nitrogen and my central atom still have their octet. My oxygen still has its octet. But I keep wanting to write nitrogen in the center. Who's to say? that the oxygen doesn't donate twice and form a triple bond to oxygen. That is also completely possible. Nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, like double and triple bonds. Um, Nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, sulfur, phosphorus. There's probably more. These are the ones I think of off the top of my head. Are really good with double. But I know nitrogen, carbon, oxygen do triple all the time. Not saying they're the only ones that do triple. I'm just saying they're the ones I can think of off the top of my head. But let's look at these three structures on formal charge. All of them are valid Lewis structures. Okay? All of them are completely valid by Lewis theory. Let's look at their formal charge. Nitrogen here. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. This nitrogen has four lone pair electrons and two bonds. Negative one. Nitrogen here. Five valence electrons, no lone pair electrons, and four bonds, plus one. Which means these two are also plus one because they each have no lone pairs and four bonds. This oxygen right here, we've already memorized. Oxygen, two bonds, two lone pairs, zero formal charge. This nitrogen, we've memorized nitrogen, one lone pair, three bonds, zero formal charge. Look this oxygen here. Oxygen has six valence electrons. That oxygen has six lone pair electrons and one bond. Overall, negative one charge on that oxygen. This nitrogen here. Five valence electrons, six lone pair electrons, and one bond. Overall, a negative two charge. And our oxygen here, six valence electrons, two lone pair electrons, and three bonds. Overall, a plus one charge. So now I'm going to try to figure out which one contributes the most and which one contributes the least to the true hybrid. I'm going to do that by looking at the formal charge because all three structures are valid Lewis structures. That doesn't mean they're all the best though. We want the one that's going to, so remember when we're looking at that, we're looking at the less formal charge, the better. So how can I minimize my formal charge? Let's look at that first. Well, I've got a negative one, positive one, and a zero. Zero plus one and minus one. So those are equivalent. And then over here, I've got minus two plus one plus one. This is definitely not minimizing the formal charge over here. All three of these atoms have formal charge. Not minimized. FC for formal charge. They're not minimized. All three of them have charge. Then it tells me two should better have the negative formal charge on the more electronegative element. And avoid like charges on adjacent atoms. Okay. This, no like charge, uh, this, the first atom, first molecule, no like charges on adjacent atoms. Second one, no like charges on adjacent atoms. The third one, I got like charges. And it wants, it says, usually better to have the negative formal charge than the more electronegative element. Now, I know electronegativity is a different section, but 
and I don't have all of it. It's a general trend on the periodic table. But ones you should flat out know is that fluorine, most electronegative. Fluorine is on 4.0 on the Pauling scale. Oxygen is number two at 3.5. Chlorine and nitrogen are number tied for number three at 3.0. Apologize, I'm trying to get this video done for you guys last minute. Carbon, I don't know what number carbon is to be honest with you, like in line, but carbon is 2.5 and hydrogen is 2.1. These three though, you should definitely know. So that means that my formal charge is not on the most electronegative element and I've got like charges next to each other and I'm not minimizing my formal charge. This is going to contribute the least. It's the least favorable. Now I'm going to look at the other two and try to figure out who's going to contribute most. Well, here I've got a negative charge on nitrogen, a positive on nitrogen. Here I've got a positive on nitrogen, so that kind of null and voids itself out, but a negative on oxygen. The negative being on that oxygen is more favorable because oxygen is more electronegative. So this middle species contributes most. And that's how I figure out which is which going to erase a bunch of this stuff. So you should probably pause this video if you need to write this stuff down. Let's look at sulfate. Again, what is sulfate? SO4 2 minus. How many electrons does sulfate have? Four oxygens times six is 24 plus a sulfur is 30 plus a negative two charge gives me 32 valence electrons. I've got sulfur and four oxygens. Give each one its octet. If I count it up right now, that is using 32 electrons. Check to make sure your central atom has its octet, and it does. There's a dot right there. This is a valid Lewis structure. By rules, it is valid. I have not done formal charge yet, though, but it is a valid Lewis structure. If I did formal charge, each oxygen, six valence electrons, six lone pair electrons, and one bond. Minus one. Minus one, minus one, minus one. Sulfur, six valence electrons, no lone pairs, and four bonds. Plus two. Overall, I have four times negative one, plus two, giving me a negative two charge. So it is a valid Rhodes, um, Lewis structure. It's just not happy. We have not minimized its formal charge. So what if I went in and I let one electron or one oxygen atom donate a pair of electrons. If I check, my all my outer atoms have their octet. My central atom has more than an octet, which is allowed for sulfur. This is a valid resonant, or this is a valid Lewis structure. Let's go ahead and figure out your formal charge. This oxygen on the top here, we know is zero because we know if oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs, it is a zero formal charge. We know that these oxygens are all negative one because we just figured that out on the previous example, right? Six valence electrons, minus six lone pair electrons, minus one bond, negative one. Sulfur, six valence electrons, no lone pair electrons, five bonds, overall plus one charge. I've got three times negative one plus one, giving me an overall negative two charge. That is completely valid. But I could still minimize my formal charge. And this is where the rest come into play. I could have one more oxygen atom donate two electrons. If 
But why those two electrons? Or why are those the two oxygens double bonded? Couldn't another one do it? Could I form the double bond over here? Yep, it's just another resonance structure. And I can continue that game, giving the double bond at any of the other oxygens as well. two more like this where you could figure out the double bonds in a second spot um as well so like i have double bond here and here here and here here and here here and here i could also have them at these two oxygens or these two oxygens so two more resonance structures exist all of those are completely valid now, what does that mean, though? Why don't I give one more oxygen a double bond to the sulfur? Space. Space limitations. Don't go more than six. Don't go more than six bonds to a central atom. It just doesn't do it. Okay? Up to six bonds. And this has six. Let's look at seeing what contributes the most, though. If I looked at the formal charge of this... I know that an oxygen with three lone pairs and one bond has a negative one charge. I know that because I figured it out in the previous example. I figured it out right here, truthfully. I know oxygen, two bonds, two lone pairs, is zero charge. And now the sulfur here. Sulfur has six valence electrons, no lone pairs, but six bonds gives me an overall zero charge. I have minimized my formal charge. So if I was looking at this, I would say that these structures contribute the most. By these, I mean this one, this one, this one, this one, or the other two that I haven't drawn. They absolutely contribute the most. This compound contributes the least because I have not minimized formal charge. I have like charges adjacent to each other. I've got just, I do have the negative charge on the more electronegative element. I do have that going for me. But other than that, this is definitely gonna contribute the least but it's still a valid structure. Now the hybrid, the way sulfur, sulfate is really going to look is you're gonna have that single bond to the oxygens and then a partial double bond character across all the bonds. So it's not that any two atoms truly hold that double bond in a resonance structure. It's that that double bond has been delocalized to spread that electron density across the entire area. Let's look at a couple more examples. Phosphate, sulfite, and nitrite. Phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. We add this up. Phosphate has five valence electrons. Oxygen, there's four of them at six each. So that's 24. So we're at 29. Plus that negative three charge gives me 32 valence electrons. Phosphorus in the center. it up. I've used 32 valence electrons. Check my central atom. My central atom indeed does have its octet. So this is a valid, um, valid Lewis structure. Let's check your formal charge. Oxygen, six valence electrons, six lone pair electrons and one bond, negative one. Phosphorus, Five valence electrons, no lone pairs, and four bonds, plus one. It's valid, but could I do something to minimize that formal charge? It is a valid Lewis structure, though. Yeah, one of these oxygens can donate its electrons. 
giving me phosphorus double bonded to an oxygen. As another resonance structure. And I always forget to write this. I either write it right inside or right outside the board, but your charge should go up there on your resonance structures. Outside the either right inside the bracket or outside the bracket. If I look at formal charge now, I know this each of these oxygens is negative one because I just calculated it previously. I know oxygen with two lone pairs and two bonds is zero. And the phosphorus has valence electrons of five and five bonds, overall zero. So while this is valid, this is better. If I look at sulfite, SO3 2 minus, sulfite has 26 valence electrons, 6 from the sulfur, 18 from my 3 oxygens plus that negative 2 charge, I get 26 valence electrons. I've used up 24. I put the 25 and 26 in that central atom. Now everyone has their octet. I technically have not violated any rules. This is a valid Lewis structure. But if I do the formal charge here, I'm going to see that each of these oxygens is a negative one charge. And the sulf excuse me, the sulfur in the center is going to be a plus one charge. Overall, plus one minus three times negative one, or plus three times negative one, giving me an overall negative two charge. It's valid. My individual formal charges add up to the overall formal charge of the ion itself. But I could double bond this thing and minimize my formal charge. So I could say sulfur with a double bond to oxygen. Zero formal charge, two bonds, two lone pairs negative one, negative one, and don't forget the lone pair on that central atom. Two minus charge. Now if I do the formal charge here, sulfur has six, minus two electrons for its lone pair, minus four bonds, overall zero. This is better. So it contributes more. Lastly, my nitrite, nitrate, NO2 minus. Nitrogen is five electrons, two oxygens at six electrons each, that's 12 plus five is 17, plus that negative charge, 18 valence electrons. Nitrogen is my central atom. Go ahead and give your outer atoms their octet. I've used up 16 electrons. I need to give any extra electrons to my central atom, so 18. Check to make sure your central atom has its octet. This one does not yet have an octet, so I'm going to use two electrons to donate to form a double bond. So I can have this structure. Excuse me. negative one charge or there's no saying it's not the other nitrogen that donates electrons I mean sorry, the other oxygen not nitrogen remember you're always donating electrons from the outer um, atoms not from the central atom that central atom keeps its electrons it does not donate those Now these are equivalent. If I looked at the formal charge, remember oxygen, two bonds, two lone pairs is zero. I definitely gave that oxygen too many lone pairs. That looks much better. Please fix that. It should only have two lone pairs and two bonds. It can't have more than that. It's in the N equals two energy level. It's not possible to have more than um, two lone pairs if it has two bonds. But those are each zero. Make it look like a zero. 
nitrogen when it has three bonds and two lone pair or in one lone pair, two lone electrons, but one lone pair is zero. And oxygen, negative one. These are completely equivalent. There is no advantage to one over the other. So they both contribute equally to the true resonance hybrid.